Just when you think it can't get any worse for Toronto's mayor, somehow it does. During a heated debate Monday afternoon at a city council meeting, a shouting match broke out between Mayor Rob Ford and hecklers. As Ford ran around the meeting, the meeting hall, he knocked down a councilwoman. This after the council voted to strip the mayor of most of his executive powers and the money to run his office. Ford recently admitted to smoking crack after denying the allegations for months. And I hear it's going to be a busy weekend in Hollywood and also here in San Diego. Our Susana Paytuck is here to give us more. Yes, we had a lot of things going on. But first, Wolverine had a little scare this, scare this week. Hugh Jackman posted a Twitter pic sporting a bandage on his nose and revealed he is very thankful to his wife for noticing the basal cell carcinoma, insisting he have a doctor check it out. He was able to have the spot removed and encourages everyone to wear sunscreen. If you're just bumming around in your living room and it's Friday night, you really need to get out there. Go out and do something. We have side shows in La Jolla at the La Jolla Playhouse. It's a musical getting fantastic reviews. You'd, if you'd rather hear live rock music, we have Journey's Noise touring featuring 303 playing at the House of Blues on Monday the 25th. On Tuesday, Michael Boublier is playing at the Valley View Casino Center. Well, if you're in need of something a little harder, we have the Other Side Tour who's playing, at the Saturday, who's playing Saturday at SOMA. So go mingle and be social. It's the weekend. Now, if you haven't already purchased your tickets for the sequel to The Hunger Games, what are you thinking? Get on it. Get on Fandango and think about showtimes because it's going to be huge. Hundreds of fans gathered for the big premiere of The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, on the red carpet Monday, and it opened in theaters today. This film is a second in a series, in a planned series of four films. So Marlena and Charlie, hopefully you guys can go out and check out The Hunger Games if you're a big fan or one of the local shows. Yeah, my, I'm a really big fan, so thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, coming up. Excuse me. <laughs> well, hello. Hi. My internet connection's acting up. Do you know anything about hot spots? You know, if you angle yourself 45 degrees to the north, your computer's Wi-Fi card will uh, extrapolate the router signal more efficiently. Hit enter. It's going to come up with a dialog box. has been cloudy and rainy. Dallas, should I be carrying around my umbrella with me? You might need your umbrella this weekend, but I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. In the Midwest, last weekend over a dozen tornadoes leveled parts of the Midwest. Towns in 12 states, including Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio, experienced record-breaking storms. I, have, I report on the devastation and also the relief efforts in the stricken areas. Less than a week after 16 tornadoes ripped through the Midwest, the numbers are in. Eight people have died and there has been an estimated $1 billion in damages. It's a thousand homes that have been affected by uh, this tornado. This video taken from a cell phone shows how powerful these tornadoes were, some with winds up to 200 miles per hour. Residents of the hardest hit areas like Washington, Illinois are left to pick up the pieces of their leveled neighborhoods. This is my bedroom. Right here. There's nothing here. But words of hope from Illinois Governor Pat Quinn. It's important that we keep our spirit up. And help from the community are the silver lining in this devastating week. The Washington, Illinois high school football team is helping clean up their hometown. We need to do something positive for the community. And this soldier left his army base to come home and help sift through the debris. I told my boss in the army and I told her that I've got to come home. There's a sense of gratitude and strength in these communities. We're, we're all healthy, we're alive, um, so and we made it, so that's the, what's important. But there's a long road ahead for the people affected by these tornadoes. 
And tornadoes like these are rare for November and happen about once every decade at that time. Usually the Midwest sees some tornadoes in the spring, but nothing as powerful as these. So we'll be keeping an eye on the cleanup effort to see what else unfolds. But bringing it back here to San Diego, the airport is at 60 degrees currently. Humidity is at 75 from all the rain we've been having. Winds from the northeast at three to five miles an hour. Surf one to three feet swells. So that's ankle slappers there for you. Ocean 63 degrees. Sun will set today at 444 and rise tomorrow at 626. Looking at your county temperatures, you can see it's really cooling down now. Uh, mid 60s from Oceanside all the way down to Chula Vista. It warms up a little bit down there as it usually does. Um, and then in East County, same during the day, but really cooling down at night, especially up in Julian, 46 during the day, 37 at night. So this is the time of year where you're gonna wanna turn on the furnace, break out your long johns, cause we're getting into winter people. All right, this is our national map. So look at this, in the middle, frigid temperatures. The light blue means it's snowing there, it's really cold. We don't experience that here. Neither does areas like Florida. You can see their temperatures are 81, 79, but it's raining there. Super humid, but raining there. So really, like I said, we're getting into those winter months. Um, looking at our national Doppler. So we have this weather system that's kind of hanging out right above our area. That's a, it's like a spinning top. We're getting the fringe of that, but it's really hitting Baja California and dumping over Arizona and even getting into Colorado, making it snow there. Um, our next map, you can see more of a localized. Yeah, so see how the low pressure is coming off the coast, offshore flow, and you can see where that precipitation really uh, going over Arizona. Um, tomorrow on the coast, cloudy, uh, slight showers, 65 during the day, low at 55. Inland, we got a high at 68, low at 48. Clouds with some sunshine. Mountains high at 51, low at 33. There's gonna be scattered showers there and a flash flood warning. And in the deserts, high at 66, low at 45 with some thunderstorms. Now I wanted to say, looking at your seven day, um, it's gonna be raining a little bit over the weekend here and there, warming up at the beginning of next week, but there is a chance of rain on Thursday for Thanksgiving. So if you're planning on eating outside, you might want to move it in just to be safe and change your plans there because you definitely don't want to get rained on while you're eating. Yeah. Well, Nobody that, likes that, all right? That's true. Well, <laughs> me and my family will be actually indoors, so. I do the outdoor thing, okay? All right. All right, thanks guys. And that's it for this week's edition of New Scene. Remember guys, school won't be in session next week. But the administration building will still be open. I'm Mariana Castellanos. And I'm Charlie Veramontes. Thank you for joining us.